Oh, hello. A series of videos about what we might do after the virus. Yeah. Um, today I want to talk about anti-Semitism in the Labour Party. Um, I'm slightly worried uh, about the recent turn of events in terms of Jeremy Corbyn being uh, effectively having the whip withdrawn, not quite being expelled from the party, as some members of the media are saying. But mm. And um, I've sort of been thinking over the last few months about my own personal history. Um, uh, my grandfather and my father were members of the Communist Party. Uh, my dad was at Cable Street. Um, he fought during the Second World War. He was at Dunkirk. He was at El Alamein Casino in Italy, finished up in Austria. Um, when I was growing up, um, he rarely spoke about uh, the things that he'd seen, but um, he was an anti-fascist all his life, certainly. And um, perhaps some of that genes has sort of rubbed off in me, certainly. Uh, my political awakening was during the 1970s with the rise of the National Front um, and uh, often used to go on sort of small scale demonstrations there. Uh, later on I decided to take a degree in sociology where I learnt, if you like, my own personal Marxism. Um, always been pro-feminist, pro-LGBT, um, always had that kind of attitude to the world. Uh, in the last 20 years I've worked in education and um, certainly um, one of the things that I'm very hot on and any young people I work with is that I won't put up with racism, sexism, homophobia, ableism, whichever you want to put it. And yet I find myself a member of the Labour Party potentially being accused of being anti-Semitic. It's a really odd thing that somebody like, for example, Jeremy Corbyn can be a very committed anti-racist and yet magically they're anti-Semitic. You can't really divide them out. Yeah, racists are racists. Yeah, they layer people according to how pure their blood is. So just just to be anti-Semitic is very, very, very unlikely. And yet magically there's a lot of us in the Labour Party. The Labour Party National Executive have decided that local uh, local Labour Party organisations can't actually discuss the issue. Mm, it's a taboo subject. Nope, not going to have any emotions on that. Not going to talk about it. So much for the Democratic Party. So we're not allowed to talk about things that we might need to talk about? Yeah. Think about that. Think about the double bind of that. And if we do talk about it, there's a very good chance we'll be labelled as anti-Semitic, as presumably I'm just about to be so. From my perspective, this is all about the state of Israel. I reserve the right to criticise the state of Israel. I'm not criticising Jewish people when I do that. The two aren't the same. Benjamin Netanyahu is not the leader of the Jewish diaspora. Sorry, but he's just not. I speak to Jewish members of the Labour Party pretty much going to tell you the same sort of thing. I reserve the right to talk about Palestine, about peace in the Middle East. I reserve the right potentially to call Israel a, an apartheid state. There you go. That's the anti-Semitism coming in. And people will say, oh, yes, you see, you're being anti-Semitic there. How? I'm criticising a state's actions. I will criticise any state's actions. I will criticise Hungary and Poland and the UK. So am I a self-hating English person when I criticise the UK? You see, uh, the BDS movement, yeah, boycott, sanctions, etc., has been gaining a lot of traction over the years. And the state of edge is Israel, the state, as a monolithic institution, sees that as very much an existential threat. And it's worked very, very hard over the years to influence foreign governments to make sure that they put a stop to that kind of thing. And my gut feeling is, and again, this is this is where I'm going to be accused of anti-Semitism, is that a lot of that is what this is about. Yeah? Let's not talk about that. Let's not talk about Palestine. Let's just smother the whole thing. And that way... That way what? I don't know. I don't know what Keir Starmer wants. Presumably what he wants is to return to those good old days when 
the Parliamentary Labour Party ran everything and weren't really interested in winning elections, or if they were interested in winning elections, it certainly wasn't on a left-wing ticket, as we have seen from the last couple of elections. The other thing that's kind of smuggled away in in um, the anti-Semitism report is the way that a lot of the machinery of the Labour Party was expressly out to make sure that anti-Semitism was going to be an issue because they knew it was going to hurt the leadership. And the final question I want to ask you is, how do you prove you're not an anti-Semite? Can't be done, can it? What a perfect thing. What a perfect stick to beat people with. Hmm. Anyway, after the virus, what I'd like is perhaps the Labour Party to put its money where its mouth is. If you're democratic, be democratic. If you want to go down the route of trying to replicate the party of the 90s, you know, the one that lost the elections, mm, remember Ed Miliband? Can't be done, guys. Think about what happened to the Liberal Democrats at the last election. There is no centre ground. Isn't going to work. If that's what you're after, guys, career politicians, know who you are. It's not chucker anymore, but we know who you are. Then that's fine, okay? But they won't be the human beings out there to knock on doors for you. Activists like me are the ones that do the donkey work. And we don't want to anymore. So after the virus, have a think about whether or not you actually want to win an election on a progressive ticket, or whether or not you just want to continue with these subsidised lunches. Count me out. It's just nice.